Hey, we're Anxiety Specialists. I'm Becky. And I'm Michael. We're going to be reacting to Outlander, most specifically an episode about last words. This episode includes PTSD, and so we're going to comment on how accurate that is and whether it represents what it's actually like to have PTSD. I personally have had PTSD, even though I've recovered from it now, and Michael has treated people with PTSD. Maybe just try to whisper. Interesting about that he's not able to talk. Mm, it's more psychological. Yeah. Which can certainly happen. PTSD for myself, you can get into that situation where you really do struggle to verbalise. There can be times where you want to talk but you can't talk. When recalling those past memories we can actually have a restriction in blood flow to the Broca's area of the brain that allows us to come up with speech and then we, we literally can't articulate it, talk about that, that trauma memory. Yeah, that's been mm. my experience is there's been times where I've stopped talking and I've almost felt like I'm being stubborn that I'm not talking, but I remember one instant where I was like, okay, I'm gonna try say something and I, I just couldn't speak. I'd lose the speech and then I'd completely lose movement and I'd be completely unable to respond. And I actually had to slowly start by moving my extremities and ah, then working well, out. Extremities are the best way yeah. um, to get things moving again because they have the, the least sensation of paralysis because they're further away from the brain. If you find yourself in a situation where you, can't, you feel like you can't speak or move, first thing to focus on is just moving fingers, toes. Mm -hmm. So what we've got here by the look of it is the sensations in his throat are triggering off the traumatic ah. memories. Auditory input or something you see or a location, especially when it's something like this, it can be can be a physical sensation. So him being silent there, yeah, so he couldn't mm. tell them, because he was on their side. Mm. So. Mm. It's really interesting that they use silent movies because mm. it's that replaying, not necessarily like just the pictures, the imagery, yeah, it's, what it's was going a way on. Of, way of portraying that. But like, have you found if you ever had a flashback to a memory in the past, was was it like a silent movie in black and white? Um, I think it's an interesting way of portraying it, but it's not so vivid a hallucination mm. it's more of the experience of feeling like you're in that moment again like mm. it's all happening again and that's where i think it's interesting that he comes out of it before it's finished so what ends up happening in the previous episode is he gets saved mm. but in that recalling of it he's still hanging and that's that's what happens that there isn't that ending that resolution when people have a, a mugging gone wrong or something, they get beaten up really badly and then an ambulance comes along. They have memory of being beaten up really badly and, and the guy saying like, I'm gonna kill you or something, right? Yeah. But not of the ambulance. And, mm. and with therapy, that ambulance memory comes in to play and the whole thing plays out, including where they were safe and got treatment and were okay. Yeah. So a lot of people mm. experience trauma where it gets triggered and you feel like you're back there, but it's not exactly like you're seeing it, hearing it, that kind of thing. Yeah. Though that can happen. Okay. Um, and what... So that's a traditional flashback where you're, you're seeing what's there. Like you're no longer here. You're not seeing what's here. You're mm. seeing what was happening there. Interesting. Um, but yeah. it's not in black and white um, with, with a little transcript. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> in fact, that's a way that can help people to be able to talk about therapy. Oh, sorry, be able to talk about um, trauma. In Interesting. Therapy, um, yes. Is to imagine that you are in a cinema, back in a seat, you're watching a movie, and maybe even a silent movie that can help add another layer to of distance. Yeah. And we would call that war neurosis, shell shock. It's been months now, and you said that Roger is physically fine, so maybe it is war neurosis. These two are having a chat about the situation and I think that's the thing is that PTSD affects more than just the person with PTSD. It affects the family and they're trying to wrap their heads around what's going on with them. It's been a while, which that's normal. It's been several months. If you've got PTSD, it's several months is not a long time. You don't even usually diagnose it in that time. Yeah. You'd wait six months and then see how things are going. 
um, and that's when you'd start thinking about a diagnosis. Here is mm. that they have too short a time frame for him to be recovering from right. PTSD. Mm. Like, they need to realise that. I mean, it's possible. Well, I mean, um, that's, that's part of the reason why the wait, yeah. because um, a person might not develop PTSD. Yeah. Um, because um, there's, I think it's something like 50% of, of us go through um, classically traumatic events in our lives. Yeah. Uh, but twenty percent of those develop PTSD. Okay. So, um, so we can go through this event, and then, um, and then some resiliency might kick in for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, support, prior beliefs, a um, yeah. bunch of different things, and you could you could not develop PTSD. It might not register itself as a as a trauma memory in the longer term. Your brain might resolve it over that time. Yeah. Because what happens with trauma memories is they get they get stuck. Yeah. In, the, in that raw state with with those um, assumptions made at that time. Yeah, and that's the difficulty. I think the thing is with how they're approaching him right now is she's gone, I've waited this time, he should be better by now. Yeah, and that's hard. And that's really a lot of pressure on the person mm-hmm. because everyone deals with trauma differently. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah, I think I do find that hard about her going, you know, it's been a few months and he hasn't mm-hmm. come right mm-hmm. when he's had a near-death experience. and. And it's clear from the flashbacks that we are seeing that he's mm. got PTSD. Mm-hmm. And he has that same thousand yards stare in his eyes. I'm afraid he's lost. No. No matter how lost he is, you just have to have faith that you find him. That thousand yard stare is going to come from the dissociation where he's not looking at here and now, he's looking at those memories. And there's also probably a bit of depressed mood in there as well, which is why he'd seem more deflated, um, yeah. why he wouldn't seem very um, engaged. I can't remember the words she used, but it was along those lines by the sound yeah. of it. Mm. I think it's also interesting that part of his trauma was being silenced. So they put the gag ah, in him. Right. And so if he's back in the memory, he can't mm. speak. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Because if you, it's the funny thing about trauma, and I've experienced this both with a more recent trauma and childhood trauma, that when you get triggered back to that moment, you've got the capacity of that person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so if he's triggered back, I think it's actually accurate that if mm-hmm. he's triggered back to a time mm-hmm. where he couldn't speak mm-hmm. and he's in that memory, mm-hmm. then it's likely that he can't speak right now. Mm-hmm. And for a person going through trauma with family and unable to express what you're going through, even that you're triggered, that you're remembering it, even because talking about it is probably going to be too triggering, but not even being able to talk about what you're going through because you've you've got part of your trauma is silence. That's incredibly difficult. I mm. that dr- that drowning in silence, that loneliness. Um, I can really see that and really really empathise with that because the times where I have had trauma where it shut me down and I couldn't mm. talk. Mm. It is very lonely and very disconnecting mm. from mm. those around you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I really feel for him. <laughs> I yeah. really feel for him. Yeah, yeah. It was a most regrettable error. Can I just say, a most regrettable error is just the most awful understatement of almost hanging a person. Oh, is that what the most regrettable error is? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh my goodness, the minimization of the trauma. (laughs) I'm guessing this is he's reading out the letter from the people Mm -hmm. who did the hanging. Right. (laughs) But still, that Uh, just... We have an apology letter. (laughs) Uh, We are very (laughs) sorry about your hanging. It's very, yeah. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Governor Tryon has granted Roger 5,000 acres in the bank country. What? Why? Compensation. In some ways, this is an acknowledgement that some wrong was done. Mm -hmm. Because of the way they've worded it, a regrettable error, we accidentally wrote down your name wrong on a piece of paper. Like, they almost killed the guy. Mm. Like, that's not a regrettable error. However, the, like, 5,000 acres of good land as compensation, Mm. I can understand why she's angry because Mm. it doesn't change what happened. Try and keep his land. I don't need land, I need my husband back. But I think for people with trauma, having some acknowledgement that wrong was done Mm -hmm. can be a good part of Mm. that healing. People often blame themselves. Yeah, Mm. yeah, and that 
not everyone gets that. No one, mm. Not everyone gets an acknowledgement of mm. wrongdoing. Mm. And so I'd imagine right now when it's raw, that's mm. it's not enough. Well, it's probably but, better for him than it is for her. Yeah. Sort of sensation, tactile trigger there. Yeah. It feels similar. And it's yeah, triggering off so the he's touched something that reminds him. Mm. Like we said earlier, all sorts of things can trigger it. And I think that's the big thing with trauma is your brain in that dangerous situation records as much information as it can about mm. sight, sound, mm. touch, mm. Um, ev smell, mm. all these things. And so it can be really weird, the things that set you off. <laughs> well, I guess we don't have all the answers. No. Sometimes we must have patience. I think um, that's a really good example of that the people who are supporting the person with PTSD need support as well. Mm -hmm. That they're going through a hard time and mm -hmm. and interesting. Previously, she said how you know he's he's different, and mm -hmm. you can feel like you've lost the person who you married if something happens to your spouse like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And so to have people there who are encouraging you is really cool. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea of patience is important as well mm -hmm. when someone is going through this. Yeah. It's not a usually an overnight process of working through it. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's not a race. No, mm -hmm. it's not. Hey. What on earth is Roger doing? He is working on the stairs for the loft. Do you think you might stop for a wee while? We bought you some leftovers. See if I can pry him away from his newfound passion for woodwork. I find that interesting that he's got a new hobby, something to distract him mm. from his his trauma. He's obsessively on it. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it might also be giving, providing him with a positive sense of self, some confidence that he's, yeah. he's doing something helpful. But I know as well that when you're having triggers and that sort of thing, sometimes absorbing yourself into something distracting can be a relief. Mm -hmm. Also working with your hands, the smell, the touch, the feel, the sound, mm -hmm. it can be quite grounding as well. Yeah. So when it's being used in a healthy way, it's mm -hmm. grounding, getting you back into the moment, mm -hmm. focused on the moment. Mm -hmm. When it's not so healthy, that's when you're using it as distraction rather than, mm -hmm. than grounding and then dealing with the trauma. So I think that's mm. interesting that he hasn't been able to speak up into that mm. moment, mm. but he sees his child about to get hurt. Yeah, yeah. And he re reacts in the moment. Yeah, reacts exactly. There, there's no, there's no hesitation, no thought that comes in to um, to get in the way. There, it's just a instant reaction. Yeah, I just feel really emotional because I feel for him in the sense that his reaction has scared his child yeah, yeah. and that's so easy to do oh, when your yeah. child's just about to do something yeah, dangerous yeah. but also that fear of others coming to harm mm. um mm. but it is interesting how how we can certain things can kick us out of that mm -hmm. um but as we'll see mm. he's not able to keep talking after that right yeah it's yeah, yeah. sort of once mm. he's out of that mm. moment um, it's not like you can scare someone into You can't um, talking scare someone or like do something yeah. horrific to their child to get them to talk again. That's mm. probably not a good idea. So the hard thing there mm. is he used to sing for his child oh, I was wondering. <laughs> and so he can't sing any at the moment mm. even it, like he's lost his voice mm -hmm. as well as struggling to verbalize he's also even if he did verbalize he wouldn't have he had a beautiful singing voice previously right. mm. so there is a sense of grief mm. with trauma mm. not being able to interact with your child mm. or your family in the way you used to mm. and I think that's a really good accurate description of um, what can happen with PTSD mm. that feeling outside of family and outside of relationship mm. um, it doesn't mean it's always going to be like that mm. and you can um, as you work through your PTSD reconnect with your family mm. and things that you loved previously um, and have joy in your life again mm. 
at the time where you're going through that real struggle, it can be heartbreaking. <clears throat> it was my mistake. We'll try again. Let's, let's try again. <laughs> so in this situation, she's playing tarot cards mm. and twice it comes up that he's got the hangman card. Oh. Which is just really unfortunate. Yeah. Um, and then it's interesting how he gets this burst of anger where he mm. sweeps mm. the cards off mm. the table. Mm. And from my personal experience, and it seems to be experience with other people mm. with PTSD, anger is definitely a part of mm. an well, issue. Anger is protective. Yeah. Mm. I need to know that you are not lost and gone forever. Are you coming back? Are you going to fight for us? She really expressed her desire for him, her desire for the relationship, mm, mm. and that she wanted him back mm. because I think you can get to this point where you feel your damaged goods and no one wants you anymore. Mm. And I think it's really good that she's still fighting for him. Mm. I'm just wondering if that maybe wasn't the most helpful way of going about it. I'm, I would be concerned if you did that with your your current partner in real but not in a tv series but in real life that you could push them deeper into that hole mm, and see themselves as useless yeah not not there for you oh. i can see what that's gonna trigger just looking up at the branches and hearing the sound of the trees yeah, yeah i can see that one So here we've got a PTSD nightmare. Yep. Um, so they're not always during the daytime. They can they can happen as dreams as well. I mean, dreams yeah. are typically where we process memories, uh, yeah. preferably the short-term memories from the last day or so. Um, yeah. But this one's a stuck one, so it's going to pop up or can pop up yeah. while dreaming. Accurate people have nightmares when they have PTSD. Oh, yeah. Um, they can be about the event. But I know some of the trauma nightmares I had were... It's a different event, but the same sort of problem of powerlessness, yeah. of something being forced. Yep. Um, so it may not specifically be the same event, it's mm. just it's the emotionally same. emotionally related. Yes. Wherever you thought you were, we're both still here. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's grounding. Wherever you thought you were. We're both still here. Mm. But also that we, the like we're together, you're with me. And I think when someone's in trauma, being able to be mm. like, mm. you're here, you're mm. with me, mm. it's not happening. Mm. We're here together mm. in this moment. Mm. You're not in the trauma. Mm. Like, there's something supportive there. I think yeah. it's very clear that he gets trauma, <laughs> the yeah. other guy. Yeah. And so he yeah. gets the needing to ground. Mm. Um, but really a, like a beautiful thing, you know, wherever you were, you're here now. Mm. Yeah, I, I just love that. That's a beautiful grounding mm. thing. <laughs> Find it interesting in that last one where it's starting to take on colour, he's starting to hear what's going uh, on. Yeah, he's yeah, got a true. better memory of yeah. what's it's not flickery, it's actually It's a good sign. It's it's the the memory is lining up mm. more in mm. the the what happened mm. and he's actually remembering what happened just before he blacked out was that he remembered right. his his partner. I, I was a bit worried when he was standing on the edge of the cliff and looking down about like suicide and it looked like the other guy was maybe too it was like oh, what's going on there? Yeah. Um, and then it looked like looking down from a height triggered off the memory. I assume him throwing that um, that paper plane is a, a representation of him letting go of the memory yeah. of the event or something like that. And maybe. I think sometimes it can be helpful to do something physical oh, yeah. to say I'm letting go of this. Mm -hmm. um, writing a letter to the person who did something to you and then burning it. Mm -hmm. Things like that can mm -hmm. actually help with the healing process. Why? Of 
all people, why would you stop me? I saw you looking down at the cliff. I can what you were thinking. You have everything. A wife that loves you. A bairn. And still you didn't want to be with them. When that rope was around your neck and you were dying, what did you see? <coughs> what did you see in the darkness? <coughs> what did you see? Tell me, what did you see? <coughs> I saw my wife's face. He's seen somebody else in a similar situation to him thinking mm. about killing themselves. Mm. And he can see why that's not a good idea. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and he helps them. Mm. Something about that seems to have affected him and yeah. brought him to a place where he can start re engaging. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's talking now. Yeah, I'm. I think there is something about seeing somebody else, what somebody else is going through mm. psychologically, mm -hmm. that can not snap you out of it. That's uh, not not how it's I want to say. Gain insight into into that yeah. situation. It's it's harder to see it when it's us ours. I mean, we get that with all sorts <laughs> of things. Yeah, it's easier mm. when it's externalized and it's somebody else, and then you mm. go, "Oh my goodness." I don't feel the way that I think people should feel about me, about this person. Mm. I think just a whole lot of things can connect sometimes when you mm. see and help somebody else going through mm. Mm. something like that. Mm. So, yeah, I. it's interesting that now he can talk again, I guess, maybe, mm. like, at least maybe he's, he's not focused on himself. He's mm. focused on somebody else. Mm. And I imagine while he's speaking to them, he's speaking to himself as well. Being on that left at that kind of moment and now coming back. You can see her hopefulness yeah. there. Yeah. He's looking at her. Brianna. Don't tell me you're at a loss for words now. <laughs> No. Mm. No, it's joking. That's good. Yeah, good sign. I've been so scared. Me too. Because even although I was saved, part of me died that day. Mm. I know how that feels. Trust me. I know. Ah. So good. The I I I understand. Mm, I that that mm. empathy. Yeah. When you share something, I'm scared. I feel like part of me died, and someone says me too. Mm. There's something massive about not feeling so alone. And it's so good that he's finally got to a place where he's able to talk again. Yeah, and she's really connecting with that bit mm. because she didn't have anything to connect with. Mm. So I think any attempt to to connect to express what's going on internally mm. can really help mm. friends and family to better support you and you can see a massive increase in hope for her with, oh with yeah that, with him talking mm. yeah and i think sometimes it can be helpful to joke well mm. i know it is helpful <laughs> <laughs> to joke about it to be mm. able to um to make light of it at times his joke there she's not going to be insecure about being able to talk and so it's okay <laughs> for him to be able to come from that position and yeah. and ribber about that um, yeah because it's not that's not a joke that's likely to hurt her yeah. if she did it to him then that might be a different story <laughs> yeah. um, but in that situation that's that's yeah. a it's a safe joke to make yeah mm. i think and if a person is able to to make some jokes about the ptsd i think that can be really helpful mm. i would be very surprised if this is the end of his PTSD and mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to really come back up in right. future episodes. Okay. So it's likely he'd still have triggers. He'd actually need to, to process those memories. Mm -hmm. I found myself, I needed to go for a process of getting to a point where I could then talk about it, talking about it, and then getting to a place of being able to accept it and move on. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think this is a really good start, but that's not going to be the end of his journey. And expecting him to be like, 
I've seen your name and now I'm on fire. And it's probably not fear. I'll never be that man again. I studied history. I taught it. Now I'm living it. When I saw that tarot card, I thought, this is who I am now. The hanged man. Maybe this was my fate. My own ancestor tried to kill me. Maybe I wasn't meant to exist. That is not true. Perhaps not. But I have changed. Remember when you asked me about my last words? Yeah. I thought I knew what they'd be. But what mattered was the last piece I saw. <laughs> that face was yours. Mm. <sighs> oh, I'll always sing for you. No matter what, no matter where. Whether you're there to hear or even if my voice isn't able. I will always sing for you. Mm. Oh. Oh. <laughs> um, I really love that he's communicated two things really. Mm. Firstly, that he's not going to be the person that he was before his trauma. And however much you can work through your trauma, You've, you've still experienced that and, mm. and you, it changes you as a person. Mm. And I think people wanting the old you back, the mm. pre-trauma you, mm. that's unfair, mm. I think. Mm. Um, but I love that he's expressed that he's willing to engage and fight with her. And mm. I think that's all, all she wanted. And I think mm. with the people who really love and care about you, they will love and care about the new you, mm. the mm. you you've become. Mm. And, and it's not like he's going to be completely different, yeah. which is what people can sometimes be worried about. Yeah. Um, but there'll be there'll be differences. I mean, it's yeah. not like he can unlearn what happened or, or have that memory disappear. Yeah. Uh, it would be like if you're like, I'm not going to be the same like person as a year ago, right? There, there's there's stuff that happened in that time yeah. that has meant that you you know different things. You have different maybe your beliefs have shifted about the world and none more dramatically than when there's a trauma event. Yeah, exactly. Mm. How you see the world, your mm. expectations of the world change. Mm. Um, and I think it's good to remember that people, when they get better, when they recover, mm. they don't become who they were before. Mm. They can, But they can become a healthy version of themselves. Mm. Sometimes even healthier. That's what researchers call post-traumatic growth. Exactly. When you have a... You have a, a growth um, in um, a healthy mindset or community or other things yeah. um, following that trauma. Yeah, so it's really important to have loved ones embracing the new mm. you, but also acknowledging for yourself that it's okay that if I'm different. Mm. I can be different mm. and I can get better. And I do like that this shows an arc where he goes through having PTSD mm. and working through it. Um, and coming out the other side. Um, I Yeah, like I said earlier, I don't think it would necessarily wrap up as tidy, tidily. Yep. I don't, he'd have that conversation with her and then he might still have some triggers. There'd be some work he'd need to do. Mm. Um, if you're struggling with PTSD or trauma, I really recommend seeing a qualified therapist to work through that. Um, it is possible to to heal and to grow through that and to be able to reconnect with your family and friends and loved ones. Mm. Um, there, there is definitely hope and we all deserve and need support to do that. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. don't have to do it alone. No. Cool. Well, that was Anxiety Specialists React to Outlander, um, PTSD. Mm. 
hope you enjoyed that. If you liked this, please like this video and um, subscribe to our channel. We would love to do more of these types of videos. Um, let us know in the comments what you thought about this, um, this, this interpretation of PTSD in media. Awesome. We'll see you down there. Cool.